Hello everyone. So, as you know from our leak chat that our topic is Enigma. So, what is Enigma? Enigma is a cipher device that was developed in earlier 20th century to protect sensitive information like military communication, war strategies, diplomatic communication, commercial communication, etc. So, basically, it was just a password protection. Now. Before getting deep into what Enigma is, let's understand what actually is a cipher device. So cipher device is a device that converts simple text into cipher text. Uh, cipher text is basically an encrypted algorithm. And the best part about this encrypted algorithm is that it's completely unreadable. So Enigma, it was that cipher device which was practically impossible to crack because it was one of the first electromechanical devices that was used in 20th century and it also had the ability to encrypt and decrypt messages very quickly so yeah this was enigma and so that so now that we know what enigma is let's understand the historical significance of enigma so although this enigma was developed by uh, scientist Arthur Scherbius in the year 1918 it was extensively used by Hitler and his German Nazis in the World War II and to stop him from uh, sending military messages and having war strategies discussed through this enigma British government formed an allied intelligence organization called as ULTRA to decrypt the enigma and few years into the World War II, they were successfully in cracking the Enigma code with the help of a supercomputer which was de developed by Alan Turing who was a famous mathematician. And the name of this supercomputer was Bombay. So before we getting deep into Bombay, I would like to call Dia to elaborate about the physics and engineering of Enigma. So, the enigma may sound like an enigma, but it is actually quite simple to understand. So let's see the physics behind this enigma machine. The main purpose of this enigma machine was to encrypt and decrypt messages. To understand how it does that, let us consider a small example. Suppose we have the word dog. This is known as the plain text and we want to encrypt it. To encrypt it, we have to look for the letter D on the top row of the cipher remain that is shown here and then replace it with a letter that is exactly below it that is N. Similarly, we replace O and G with X and K respectively and dog becomes NXK. This NXK is the cipher text. In order to decode this and get the original word, we uh, follow the exact same procedure that is we find N in the lower row and then replace it with the letter that is exactly above it. So that was the basic idea behind the Enigma machine. But now there is a twist. The Enigma is able to change the mapping between the letters. And this is very crucial because if someone has decoded somehow that N is the replacement for D, he or she will know that for every N in the cipher text, D is the replacement. But this doesn't happen in case of an Enigma machine because the connection, it can be changed. And this change is achieved with the help of rotors or wheels. An Enigma machine may contain three to eight rotors and these rotors are named using Roman numerals, one, two, and three. And these rotors, they are moved. So the third rotor might actually be in the extreme left, that is the first position. The first one might be in the middle, the second one might be at the last. So they can be moved, thus increasing the possibility for a particular letter. Let's see what we mean by that. So there is this letter A and uh, let's see how many possible paths are there for A in an enigma machine that contains three rotors. Now through the first rotor, there are 26 possible paths similarly for the second and the third rotor thus giving a total of 26 cube that is around 17,000 to 18,000 possible paths for one letter. Now the alphabet that is connected to the rotor is linked to another set of stationary alphabets which are linked to plugs and there is a plug board. Now these plugs, they could be swapped this complicated things further because the possibility for a particular letter further increased. Now to communicate like the other side, 
to uh, decrypt this message they used to have the they need to have the exact same configuration as the enigma machine that encrypted it and this was communicated within the units the germans they used to send bits of paper in all the units who used to know that uh, the exact configuration on a particular day and these papers were distributed per month and the configuration used to change every 24 hours thus making it very difficult to decode this but a famous mathematician alan turing he actually decoded this machine and next part we'll see how breaking of the bat alan turing was a brilliant mathematician whose main focus was cracking the enigma code a major flaw with the enigma code was that the letter could never be encoded as itself in other words m would never be encoded as m this was the huge flaw in the enigma code because it gave the code breakers a piece of information that they could use to decrypt the messages if the code breakers could guess word or a phrase that would probably appear in the message they could use the information to start breaking the code further because germans always sent a weather report in the beginning of the message and usually included the phrase heil hitler at the end of the messages there were phase decryptors knew what to look for decoders could compare a given phrase to the letters to in the code and if a letter in the phrase would match up with the letter in the code they knew that the part of the code did not contain the phrase the decoders could then begin cracking the code with process of elimination approach but this approach was not always successful as the nazis updated the encryption daily and it required a lot of time this issue was solved by alan turing who developed world's first modern computers known as the bombay machine which successfully broke the enigma code so we are in india so guys this was all about enigma and as mentioned in the video alan turing broke the code with the help of bombay machine making it practically useless as it can be broken within an hour nowadays hence this technology was forgotten and was later uh, replaced by more advanced encryption devices and totally we use many such algorithms digitally and on our electronic devices so that's it from our side thank you